Let me help you in visualizing what is given here. We are looking at a positive point charge, capital Q, which is brought near an isolated neutral metal cube. Here is the neutral metal cube, let's say. A positive point charge capital Q is brought near this. We have to choose the correct option among these. First one, the Q becomes negatively charged. Second one, the Q becomes positively charged. Third one, the interior becomes positively charged and the surface of Q becomes negatively charged. Last one, the interior remains charge free and the surface of Q gets non-uniform charge distribution. In order to choose the right option, we have to remember a few points. First one, initially, this conducting cube is neutral. There is no contact of this cube with any charged particle. There is no charge transferred to it by rubbing or by friction or with the contact. So, the net charge in the beginning and the net charge at the end should be the same, which is zero. Second point, you are looking at a point charge capital Q brought in the vicinity of the surface. So, the surface which is closer to this point charge should get a charge distribution in the sense should get a charge induced on it. What kind of charge? Since this is a positive point charge, the charge induced on the nearer surface of the cube has to be opposite in nature, which is negative. What kind of distribution is this? It has to be a non-uniform distribution. So it will be something like this. What's the reason? It's because the field intensity due to this point charge at different points on the nearest surface will be different. Exactly why it will be a non-uniform charge distribution on the nearest side of the cube. Be careful. Now, this is a conducting cube. Under electrostatic conditions, the net electric field inside the material of such a conducting cube has to be zero. In that case, no charge should reside in the material of the conductor. Any charge, any charge which is induced at all has to reside on the outer surfaces only. Exactly why? There is no charge induced whatsoever within the material of the conductor. The overall charge, the net charge on the conducting cube is zero in the beginning. That brings us to the next point. In order to maintain this net charge being zero on the conducting cube, there has to be an opposite type of charge induced on the other side, the farther side. And that has to be positive in nature. What kind of distribution is this? Non-uniform again. You may ask why? It's because with this kind of charge distribution, you will find the net electric field inside inside the material of this conducting cube to be zero. It will not be possible otherwise. So, with all these points in mind, let's look at the options. Obviously, the correct statement has to be D. It is about choosing the right option such that the flux of the electric field through a closed surface is zero. Look at the options given. First one, the electric field must be zero everywhere on the surface. The total charge enclosed within the surface must be zero. The electric field must be uniform throughout the closed surface. The charge outside the surface must be zero. All right. To answer this, we have to apply Gauss law. And how do you write Gauss law mathematically? Like this. Integration over a closed surface of E dot ds must be equal to q enclosed by epsilon naught. Let me explain. If you choose a closed surface, something like this, what is E here? It is the net electric field at a point chosen on the Gaussian surface or this closed surface. 
What do I mean by net electric field? It can be because of the charge inside and outside. In fact, it is a net electric field because of all the charges, whether it is inside or outside. Remember that. What about DS? It is a small differential area element that we choose on this closed surface. We treat it as a vector. What is its direction? It is along the outward normal. Now, if you integrate this dot product as a quantity over the closed surface, what you get on the left hand side is called net electric flux. And that must be equal to Q enclosed by epsilon naught. What is Q enclosed? The charge, the net charge enclosed by this closed surface. Now, look at the options. The electric field must be zero everywhere on the surface. Second one, the total charge enclosed within the surface must be equal to zero. Let's take up the second one first. He says, for the flux of the electric field through the closed surface being zero, the total charge enclosed within the surface must be zero. We know that this quantity is electric flux and this can become zero only when the right hand side happens to be zero as well. In that case, Q enclosed, the net charge enclosed by this closed surface must be zero and this option obviously is correct. Now, look at the other options. In order to understand this better, let me give you a hypothetical situation. For a moment, consider that the net charge enclosed by this closed surface is zero. Consider a charge, a point charge outside this Gaussian surface, somewhere here. Let's say the charge is plus Q. Obviously, the electric field lines emanate from this point charge throughout the space away from it, like this. Now, look at point A and point B. Obviously, you know that the magnitude of the electric field because of this point charge is not same at point A and at point B. Remember, I'm asking you to consider only this plus Q charge to be present in the vicinity, nothing else. So, we agree that at point A and at point B, the magnitude of this net electric field happen to be different. But do you realize that the net electric flux through this closed surface is still zero? One interpretation is that the net charge enclosed by this closed surface is zero. The other interpretation is that the total number of electric field lines which enter this closed surface also leave this closed surface. So, Net electric flux through this Gaussian surface or closed surface is zero. Obviously, this is wrong. It need not be uniform throughout the closed surface. Also, look at this option. The electric field must be zero everywhere on the surface. I just proved to you that it need not be. So, this is wrong as well. Look at the fourth option. The charge outside the surface must be zero. We just now discussed that this is not true. So, the correct option happens to be B. In the next question, we are considering a region which has uniform electric field. And we are considering a small plane area which is rotated in this field. We are supposed to choose the right option, the right condition, such that the flux of the electric field through this area is a maximum. Here are your given options or the conditions. In order to understand this and choose the right option, first of all, we need to look at how do we define the net electric flux through a small plane area. We take it as the dot product between the electric field in the region and the area vector defined. How? Let me explain. If this region contains a uniform electric field vector E, and if I consider a small plane area as shown, 
we can treat this area as a vector quantity. Now you may ask what's the direction? It's basically perpendicular to this surface. Then again, you may ask me there are two directions. One in this way, other this way. Which one should we choose? Choose one. Like this. And call it the positive normal. There can be different conditions, situations that may arise. Let's look at them. First situation. Electric field is perpendicular to the plane area chosen. So, here is your vector A in direction. Electric field happens to be parallel to the area vector. In that case, theta is 0 and that gives us the net electric flux through this plane area to be E A cos 0 degree. And that will be E A. Look at the second situation. It may happen that when you are rotating this plane surface, the surface may be like this. Its area vector chosen is in this fashion. And it may so happen that electric field is perpendicular to that area vector chosen. So, in the second case, theta is 90 degree. What will be the net electric flux in this case? It will be phi equals E A cos 90 degree and that gives you 0. Net electric flux in this situation happens to be 0. Case 3. Here is your plane surface. This is vector A and let's say electric field vector makes an acute angle theta with the area vector. In that case, phi is E A cos theta. Cos theta value is in between 0 and 1. Now, look at the fourth case. Here is the plane surface, area vector defined like this, and the electric field vector may be opposite to this area vector chosen. So, what is theta here? 180 degree and phi happens to be E A cos 180 degree or minus E A. You now have all the possible cases. In which situation is the net electric flux through this plane area the maximum? Obviously, first one when the electric field in direction is perpendicular to the plane surface chosen. Now, look at the options given. Obviously, the correct one is B. We are considering a region of space where there is a uniform electric field present and it is represented by the vector 8i cap plus 4j cap plus 3k cap. What are we supposed to find? The magnitude of the electric flux through a surface area of 100 units in magnitude and this surface lies in xy plane. Here are the given options for the magnitude of the electric flux. Okay. How do we evaluate electric flux through a surface area? We take it as the dot product between electric field vector and the area vector chosen for the surface and we call it phi. Do we know vector E? Yes, we do. What about area vector, vector A? We don't know that yet. But we know that this surface lies in xy plane. And we define area vector in direction to be along the perpendicular drawn to the surface. Then again, if it is in xy plane, we can actually choose two different directions, right? One along positive z-axis, another along negative z-axis. But it's okay. We are asked to find the magnitude of the electric flux. So it's okay to choose either of them. Let's say vector A is along z-axis and in magnitude it is 100 unit. So vectorially I can write it as 100 k cap. This is the given data. Area vector is 100 unit k cap. Now let's evaluate for the net electric flux 
through this given surface area. It is phi equals E dot A. What is E vector? It is 8 I cap plus 4 J cap plus 3 K cap. Dot product of that with area vector 100 K cap. Simplify this and you get 300 units. That's your final answer for the net electric flux through the given surface area. Look at the options now. The correct one happens to be B. We are considering a square frame of edge 5 cm, which means that each side of the square frame is in dimension 5 cm and it is kept in a region of uniform electric field of intensity or strength 200 Newton per coulomb. Now this square frame is kept such that the positive normal defined to this frame makes an angle of 60 degree with the uniform electric field. With this information, we need to find the net electric flux through the surface bound by the frame. And here are the given options. Well, how do you evaluate for the electric flux in such a situation? You take the dot product between the given electric field vector and the area vector defined for the given surface area. It can also be written as Ea cos theta. Let me explain. If this is the surface area chosen, if this is the positive normal in direction chosen to the surface area, in that case, E here is a magnitude of the uniform electric field and it is given to us. It is 200 Newton per coulomb. What about area? In magnitude, it is 5 centimeter square. This is because it is a square frame. So 25 centimeter square. What about theta? If electric field is in this direction, making an angle theta with respect to the positive normal chosen for the surface area, then this theta in this case is given to be 60 degree. We know everything. All we need to do is evaluate for the net electric flux. Once again, this is the given situation. Here is the square frame with the area vector A given like this. And here is a electric field vector making an angle 60 degree with the given area vector. Let's evaluate for the electric flux. Phi is E A cos theta and that turns out to be 200 into 25 into 10 to the power minus 4 into cos 60 degree which is half. Simplify this and you get phi to be 2500 into 10 to the power minus 4 or 0.25 Newton meter square per coulomb. That's your final answer. Now look at the options. The correct one turns out to be B.